and good morning. It is day six of our Lincoln Highway road trip and we are starting today right here alongside the Lincoln Highway in Valparaiso, Indiana. And Valparaiso, Indiana holds a special place in my heart because this is the town I grew up in. Um, I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin but spent the majority of the first 18 years of my life living here in Valparaiso, Indiana. And I will be completely honest with you, I, growing up, I was not aware of the Lincoln Highway. Um, here, we call the Lincoln Highway Lincoln Way, and it is the main, it is actually the main street here in town, but uh, I, had, I was not aware that it was a coast-to-coast -coast highway. I did not know that I just needed to hop on Main Street and drive all the way to San Francisco or all the way to New York. Actually, I think San Francisco's that way. Uh, New York's that way. Anyways, I, I was not aware. I was not aware growing up. So, I'd actually, I lived just a few blocks away. I could walk, growing up in the house I grew up in, I could actually walk to the Lincoln Highway from where I live, but didn't know, didn't know um, uh, that, that that this major road cut through the town that I grew up in. But in more recent years, uh, the town of Valparaiso has embraced the Lincoln Highway. This monument here, uh, this was erected in 2006 as a map of the Lincoln Highway. You can see Indiana, it looks like people have been rubbing Indiana right there for some reason. Yeah, but you can see our trip from here. This is the last six days and then we're gonna be heading out west to these big old states out here. And uh, it says Lincoln Highway was the first coast to coast road covering 3,389 miles. That's much larger than Route 66. It says it was a dream of Hoosier Carl Fisher. Okay, so the idea of the Lincoln Highway was thought up in Indiana. Here is a recreation of the famous Lincoln Highway marker placed here in Valparaiso to celebrate the Lincoln Highway. You can see a little penny-headed Lincoln right there. You can see that sign there, even though they refer to the Lincoln Highway as Lincoln Way, they still have that Lincoln Highway logo on the sign. Now probably what Valparaiso, Indiana is most known for is this man right here, Mr. Orville Redenbacher, the notorious popcorn baron. This wonderful sculpture of him sitting on the bench. I just noticed this. I, I've been to the statue many times, but I'd never noticed before that he has popcorn on his bow tie. Stopped off in Maryville, Indiana, where they have the Albanese Candy Factory. You can see the actual candy factory back there where the candy is manufactured. You can actually smell like a weird sweet smell in the air from the factory. And then we have this nice little house out front that serves as the gift shop. Now the Albanese Candy Factory, known mostly for their gummies. You can see this gummy bar right here. You get individual flavors. If you only like one certain flavor, gummy bear, you can get them all in one flavor. Oh, look at these worms. A wide variety of candy in here. Never quite understood these. There's the, uh, the candy dots on the paper. You have to like pick them off with your fingernails. Never understood the appeal. It's just a little tiny candy. And then, oh, sorry, put that back. Candy cigarettes, it's a miracle. How are these still something that is sold? We have the cigarettes and then the, the uh, candy chewing tobacco. Look at this gummy taco, that's pretty interesting. A little gummy pizza and a gummy hot dog. So get just a big old, big old lollipop. When's the last time anyone out there has just eaten a big lollipop? Here we have gummy, 
goof ups. I guess these are gummy worms that have somehow been misprinted. I'm not sure exactly what's wrong with these gummy worms, if they're like not curled the right way or something like that, but you can buy the, the misprints here for $8. It is a huge bag. Oh my gosh. I would get that, but I just, I don't know what I would do with that many gummy worms. I would never, ever be able to, to eat all these. If I tried eating all these, my entire mouth would just be completely bloody with sugar burns. So I purchased what they call a gummy kebab. It looks like it's in red, white, and blue colors. The upcoming Independence Day. Let's see if we can get this unwrapped here. Ribbon off. Oh no, this ribbon's on here tight. I've never been good at untying ribbon. There we go. So we got the ribbon off. We can take off this plastic sheath. And look, look at this. So it's got the patriotic gummies, but it's also got these soldier gummies. It's like shaped like a like a soldier. You see, he's got a bazooka right there. But what's even funnier is they have these soldiers here that are like impaled through the chest and their legs are hanging down. Some gummy bears there as well. So that's funny, I don't know, the little legs, soldier legs there. Oh no, we've been impaled. So let's see. Mmm. I bit off a little more I can chew there. So yeah, mmm. I do like the Albanese gummies. I do have a distinct flavor and texture from other gummies. Really soft, really soft flavor. A real gentle gummy. As I pull off the legs, pull off the legs of the soldier. <laughs> oh. Yeah, some good quality gummies here. The Albanese Factory Inn. Maryville, Indiana. Now this stretch of the Lincoln Highway you see in front of you is in fact the ideal section of the Lincoln Highway. As you can see from this monument here, this was dubbed the ideal section of the Lincoln Highway in 1921. And actually what happened is that they took this one mile here of the Lincoln Highway and they basically created what they called at the time, the 1920s, they called it the road of the future. It had all the makings of the modern road, the way they laid the concrete, the way they made the curbs, the sidewalks. It was pretty much a modern highway built in the 1920s and was considered the best mile of road in the entire country at that point. And back here, there's a monument to Henry Osterman, Vice President and Field Secretary of the Lincoln Highway Association. Oh no, he was killed on the highway in Iowa in 1920s. I mean, very sad that he died, but maybe a little bit of irony too that he was the Vice President of the Lincoln Highway Association and he actually died on the Lincoln Highway itself. I must admit, this section of the Lincoln Highway is pretty ideal leaving the state of Indiana and crossing into the great state of Illinois, also known as the land of Lincoln. Stopped off here in Joliet, Illinois, here at this very important intersection. You see at this intersection right here is the point where Route 66 and the Lincoln Highway intersect. Now earlier this year I went on a long journey on Route 66. Did Route 66 from Chicago to Santa Monica in California. But now, but now we are on the Lincoln Highway where the two meet. The one place where these two roads meet. And again remember we have America's Main Street, Route 66, and Main Street across America, Lincoln Highway. So this road here, that is the Lincoln Highway. 
And then the road coming from here and going in this direction, that is Route 66. As I've mentioned, I love stopping at uh, local museums while I'm on my travels. So here we stop here at the Joliet Area Historical Museum. They have a Route 66 shield hanging from their signs. There may be a Route 66 theme in this museum, but uh, let's check it out. It feels weird doing Route 66 photo ops while I'm while I'm traveling the Lincoln Highway. Rotating doors here. While there is heavy Route 66 theming in here, we do have some Lincoln Highway representation. A Lincoln Highway concrete post. We have a little Chevrolet that I guess we're allowed to uh, climb inside. Oh yeah, you can see the radio there. And look who greets us here at the Joliet Historical Museum of the Blues Brothers as we are on a mission from God, the prison, the Joliet prison. As you see from these pictures right here was actually a filming location in the Blues Brothers. So the Blues Brothers are rather celebrated in uh, these parts. You can see him doing, a, doing their little Blues Brother jig there. You can see they even added a little touch here. You can see their names tattooed on their hands. You can see there is a car chair there and a little car love seat over in that direction. Now this is pretty cool here. We have, a, this is like the star maker machine that creates the stars for a planetarium right here. So this used to be at a planetarium here in Joliet. Just imagine if you had a giant star making machine like that in your own home. You could create an amazing universe in your living room. Here's some items from the old Joliet prison. These handcuffs and keys to the jail cells and a big old prison padlock back there. As we walk through this canal here, you see the canal workers up there on the edge. Must be using that shovel to dig the canal. I think this is their supervisor. He's just watching with his hands on his hips. See the canal digger here with his shovel, with his wheelbarrow, with his sad expression and his pained eyes. Looks like he wished he was doing anything except digging a canal right now. And I'm a little unclear on this. I don't know if there's some sort of scavenger hunt, but just sitting over here by the canal is a little toy action figure of Yoda. Talking about the steel industry here. See the steel worker up there, hard at work on that steel beam. But you know what? You look close and he's got a Star Wars action figure. I'm, I'm, I don't know why there's random Star Wars action figures dispersed around the museum. This is meant to look like one of the spires from the Joliet Museum. And inside there is a commemorative plaque that was commissioned by the prisoners. It says, I was in prison and ye visited me to Uncle Tom. So apparently there was a man who worked in the prison as an usher. I'm not sure what an usher does in a prison, but apparently he was so kind to the prisoners that they uh, pulled the resources and built a plaque commemorating him. He was known as the prisoner's friend. Some more prison items. They have a prison shirt there, as well as a old ball and chain and some uh, prison dining wear. Some items in here that are actually made by prisoners at the prison. Some uh, folk art. You can see an angel plowing a field a couple of oxen there and then we have Jesus on the cross. We'll check out the gift shop here before we exit. 
got some Blues Brothers merch there. You buy the hat and glasses combination, all you need there to be a Blues Brother. Blues mobiles here. And they even have the uh, Blues Brothers hot sauce. This is Joliet Jake. Another set of Blues Brothers in here. And it may be tempting to sit on their laps the way they're sitting, but it says, please do not sit on us. We're on a mission from God. There's a lot of Route 66 merch in here. All they have for the Lincoln Highway is that pennant, which unfortunately is not for sale. So I did ask on, on the Star Wars uh, figures that were dispersed amongst the exhibits, and apparently they have an annual Star Wars parade here in Joliet. That was yesterday. I missed the Star Wars parade here at Joliet. Unfortunately, maybe, maybe next year we can come back to Joliet and visit the Star Wars Parade. It's an interesting Route 66 sculpture. It says the Mother Road there. And uh, I don't know if that is the Mother Road symbolically holding its child, but you can see some Route 66 locations incorporated into the sculpture. They have the Santa Monica Pier up there at the top, the western endpoint of Route 66. Oh, and then over on this side, you have the uh, you drop in gas station out in Shamrock, Texas. And as we leave Joliet, we pass over the only place where you can simultaneously be driving on the Lincoln Highway in Route 66. We've stopped off in North Aurora, Illinois. I guess we are north of where uh, Wayne and Garth live. But I wanted to stop off here at Scott's Vintage Antiques and Collectibles. I've heard uh, they have some interesting stuff here. As can be seen by the gorilla lashed to the pole here. Oh no, it looks like someone left the lid off their pickled punk. Oh my gosh. It's a rubber baby in there. I think that's a, I think that's a baboon skull there. And uh, that's a werewolf wearing a hat. Oh, I just noticed this sign above the door. It says, Museum of Wonders. This place is completely amazing. You can look at these sideshow banners here. Amazon, Snake Charmer, Zoma, the Depraved. You can see the uranium glass there. It's glowing. I don't know if that's healthy to use. I don't know if you should make orange juice there with a uranium orange juice maker. The only three-legged football player in the world. Actually, it's a soccer player there. Here we got some cool dolls. Crocodile heads, some wonderful skulls. A little duck there. Oh, love that rooster. Oh, and look at this. this is a, I think this is a cast of a, of a pregnant woman's belly. Some records in here. Oh, watch out. Chaos reigns. There's some vicious piranha there. I don't know what kind of fish that is with the big mouth. And a little crocodile. Oh look at the baby ducks. Looks like one of the baby ducks is wearing wearing an Easter hat. I don't know what this is here. What kind of creature is that with the sprout for a head? And What's this, the Boston Strangler's Gloves? I thought the Boston Strangler strangled people with pantyhose, but I guess he needed to wear gloves too. Oh, there's a whole collection of serial killer gloves. This is a glove from the Mad Gasser of Mattoon, Illinois, who went around gassing people. What are these, like, that part, it's like a pepper person. A little elf right there. Got some skulls there. Skeleton is dressed up and wearing some googly eyes. It's an anatomical model there wearing a coonskin cap. And the coonskin cap actually has eyes. Oh, down there, some sort of fish child, fish baby, if you will. And some Masonic hats there. Other odd things. Oh, there's some 
Some bunks over there. Fuzzy little, fuzzy little armadillo there. And a lion, holding a lion baby. And look at this, there's a Jenny Hanover or devil fish. It's a classic sideshow gag. Oh, look at the big frog there. A skeleton there, getting ready to belt out a tune on that microphone. And a bear over here using a parasol to keep the sun off of his fur. And then we have a banner for Dicky, Dicky the Penguin Boy. A little dummy there. Guarding the restroom. Some sort of crazed mummy person. We have Captain Spalding here. Looks like we have some sort of two headed raccoon there. Oh, look at that. A little chipmunk head on a stick there. Oh, look at that gorilla over there wearing the fez cap. See, it says yummy home baked French bread. And look what we got here. I've seen these before. These are talking chimp heads. I don't know if they currently talk, but the lips, lips would move, the eyes would blink. They're like animatronic monkey heads. Another anatomical model there. It's like a Napoleon hat. Two-headed fetal skeleton there. There's a collection of skulls here. See this, this doll. This doll head or an animatronic doll head. That's really cool. There's some phocidermy up there where they would actually use real skin and fur to create smaller versions of animals. Okay, so this here, I didn't recognize it at first. This is a recess, recessa ante where you'd practice CPR on. Interesting fact, they all have the same face and they're all, the faces was based on a woman who drowned in a river in France. This is a defective hip joint that was later replaced. So this hip joint was actually in someone's hip at one point. Oh, look at this. I actually have a full-sized electric chair in here. Pretty cool. It's got the straps. I guess the copper helps you get more electrocuted. Oh, look at that mask there. I think that's one of the aliens from Twilight Zone. It's a stack of records there. Oh, look at this. Look at this creepy head right there. Some sort of fiberglass face there and then a creepy doll there in that box that just looks haunted it's like this stool here is actually that's an elephant foot maybe it's a real one yeah okay there's the elephant's other foot right there so this here is a pony fetus you can actually see very very formed you can definitely see the horse like look there oh look at that even more serial killer Gloves. We have Ed Gein's human skin gloves made made out of authentic human skin. My dad actually had this lamp as I was growing up. So this is the original Sven Gulli costume. Sven Gulli was a horror host here in the Chicagoland area. Had a very different look later on, more of a ghoulish look. But I guess this was how Sven Gulli originally appeared. Oh, and there's Lizzie Borden's boots. And some hair from the Beast of Bray Road out in Wisconsin. This appears to be a quail with a shrunken human head. It's an amazing baboon here. He's got the crazy hat on, but that is a terrifying baboon. It's a cast of a two-headed baby there. So Scott's Vintage and Antiques, awesome shop out here in North Aurora, Illinois. They actually uh, recognized me from some of my other uh, oddities uh, videos that I had done. So really cool place, it's a really great collection, kind of a hidden gem out here. I did purchase, I, I, I was a sucker for these pennants. I did get the uh, Great Meteor Crater pennant, which I was at uh, a couple months ago in Route 66. And then look at this, old Ripley's Believe It or Not, pennant it's from estes park colorado um I, I had no idea this ever existed so apparently there was a believe it or not in colorado at one point and check that out you got annie oakley buffalo bill and then the guy with the two pupils in each eye <laughs> 
stopped here in Malta, Illinois. And you get some lunch here at Old School Pizza. Looks like they're called Old School Pizza because they're in an old school. According to the sign over the doorway, this was the Malta Grade School. Started in 1937. Check this out. We have Mighty Mouse riding an elephant out here in front of Old School Pizza. That's pretty crazy. I wonder where this came from. I wonder where there was a statue of Mighty Mouse riding an elephant. Looks like we have the Ecto-1 parked out here in front of the pizza parlor. And what is that? A SpongeBob SquarePants mailbox. Some pop culture figures here eating pizza. We have a Smurf. We have a little Grogu eating his tiny piece of pizza. Normally he likes eating frog eggs. There's Garfield and his friends. And then we have Frankenstein and his wife. Oh, she's going for the last piece of pizza and he's like, no, my pizza. Then Slimer here and oh yeah, the macho man, Randy Savage. Then Freddie Mercury there holding his pizza aloft. Mr. Elvis also has a slice of pizza. But anyways, let's head inside. Check this out. Got these vintage arcade games here. There's one of the rare talking Elvis animatronic heads over there. There's the arcade room in here. Notice this music blasting from this wall of boom boxes. Was that, is that Homie the Clown? Oh my gosh, Homie the Clown. Some wonderful 90s characters. Steve Urkel, the uh, Ed Grimley, Beetlejuice, the Crypt Keeper, Pee Wee Herman. I don't know if I've ever played the game Kicker. I guess you go around kicking people. Yeah, it does appear that's what he is doing. What is this, a puppet theater? Who's in the puppet theater? Oh, we got, we got, looks like two pirates. Two uh, pirates holding swords on each other. Oh, wow. There they go. There's the puppets. They're having a sword fight. There's a ship behind them. Oh, this is amazing. Some sort of dinosaur in the corner here. I guess this would be a ride for kids. It's actually another dinosaur over here that you can ride. And some wonderful arcade games. They have The Simpsons, Virtua Fighter, Daytona USA, lots of fun stuff. It's a wonderful He-Man collection. There's Stinkor the Skunk. <laughs> Got He-Man on his cat there with Castle Grayskull. And then I had this castle when I was a kid. This was a microphone. This weasel head was a microphone that made the castle talk. Oh, I always loved the, the weird looking guys when I was a kid. Always asked for the weird villains. Over here we got Ronald McDonald right in front of the Wendy's side of all things. And this is Ziggy the Clown. And just look at this place. There's so much cool stuff in here. I'm completely overwhelmed. So what do we got here? This is a crystal fortune teller. Apparently that one is actually out of order. But look up here, we have Frankenstein, Velvet Elvis, Reagan, from the Exorcist. Oh, I don't know what this is. Some sort of animatronic here. I guess it would ride a tricycle. Very cool. This giant statue of an Egyptian pharaoh overlooking the dining room. Got Darth Maul, Spider-Man, just all these figures here. The Pillsbury Doughboy. There's Bozo the Clown's grand prize game. I used to get up every morning to watch Bozo. And my favorite part was the kids playing the grand prize game. They, there's so much tension on whether they get the balls or not in the buckets. Yeah, amazing collection of 80s toys there. There's E.T. and Big Boy. Oh, Beavis and Butthead there. And look at the size of that troll. Oh, look at that. There's, the, there's Mohawk Mogwai from Gremlins 2. And look at this wrestling figure collection. These are the old LJN figures. Oh, that is quite a collection there. Nikolai Volkov, George the Animal Steel, Captain Lou Albano. You can have a AWA steel cage there. 
down there is a megaphone signed by Jimmy Hart, the mouth of the South. I think that is Captain Cook from the old McDonald's commercials. This car here, the drive-in speakers, we got Gumby, and uh, who's this lady? She used to have her own comics. I think this tree is also from McDonald's. It's like, is that french fries in it? Is it a french fry tree? We have Elvis here fronting a band. Looks like it's an old animatronic band. The guy playing the trumpet there. The guy playing the drums. The guy playing the stand-up bass back there. Really cool old band there. And check out these vintage wax figures. I have no idea where these came from. This is Laverne and Shirley right there. And then we have Archie Bunker and Edith Bunker. Oh, I'd love to know what wax museum these came from. Amazing uh, old television there. See the booths here. That's actually where I'm sitting. And then we got the more figures up here. The big giant Sully from Monsters, Inc. There's Michelangelo shredding a guitar there. I have a big boy statue up there along with Bella Lugosi, one of the chipmunks. Is that Alvin? There's Michael Myers. Fortunately, instead of a knife, He's actually holding a pizza cutter. He doesn't want to stab you to death. He just wants to help you cut your pizza. We have Leonardo, a Duplo pirate, Sherlock Holmes, and the Beast, the Beast Incarnate. Hanging over here is Colonel Sanders. They have a Colonel Sanders statue like this at the first uh, KFC in Corbin, Kentucky. There's a piano here, but I don't think we're supposed to play it. It says, if your name isn't Billy Joel, Jerry Lee Lewis, Stevie Wonder, Elton John, please don't play the piano. So I guess these are the only exemptions. If any of these men walk in here, they have a right to just go to town on this piano. There's a statue of Jack Daniels. I think this is actually a recreation of his tombstone. His gravestone is actually a statue of him like that. Hanging in the rafters, you have all these amazing uh, ventriloquist dummies. And then Slimer there, he's got a puppet too. Slimer's uh, puppeteering lamb chop right there. So we got the DeLorean up there. This is the flying version of the DeLorean from Back to the Future 2. And then a train with the Simpsons on it. You can see Bart hanging off the back in his lazy manner there. He's got dead eyes, black like a doll's eyes. There's a Three Stooges lamp here, and an E.T. lamp as well. I don't think I've ever seen an E.T. lamp. Oh, I almost didn't see him hiding over here. I'm Batman. We have a beer wolf here. He was a werewolf that advertised beer, although for some reason I cannot think of the beer he advertised. I, I think it was Coors? If anyone remembers what beer the beer wolf advertised, uh, leave a comment in the comment section. And uh, we have a tiki, tiki right next to the beer wolf. And then who do we have over here in the telephone booth? It is, it is Superman. He is half changed. He's, you know, it looks like he's kind of casually getting undressed and becoming Superman. I spot the uh, snake version of Beetlejuice over there. And then I think this is the art piece of art from Beetlejuice that came alive and uh, grabbed a hold of somebody. Oh, and then up there, we have a super, is that Superwoman or Supergirl flying over top? All right, and I ordered the Weird Al pizza. It said it was a, a pizza with extra cheesiness on it. So uh, can't go wrong with a pizza named after Weird Al, can you? Weird Al cheese pizza here. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, it's very hot. Pizza, this cheese is like lava. But mmm, that is super cheesy, super good. Very much I find that pizza to be delicious. I'm gonna cool my mouth off. A little bit with some Coca-Cola. Another bite here. Mmm, so good. I think I'm gonna have to tap out and uh, leave these last two pieces of pizza some very good pizza though very 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 cheesy and delicious so this here is a mcdonald's skittle dispenser it's got skittles there in the middle let's put a 
quarter in there and Oh, what's gonna happen? Oh! Blasting Skittles. Down. Oh, where'd they go? Oh, there's Skittles right there. Oh, I got some Skittles. Oops. Stopped off here at Road Ranger to get some gas. And the reason I stopped is because the gas here is a lot cheaper than what I've been seeing. Believe it or not, 509 is very cheap right now. When I was driving through Indiana just earlier today, I was seeing gas prices from 559 to 599. So uh, as crazy it is, this feels like a bargain. Yep, a real bargain. Come down here to Railroad Park here in Rochelle, Illinois. This is a park where people can observe trains because this is the intersection of two major train lines, Union Pacific and BNSF. Now train fans from all over the world will come here to view trains from this location. Even have a special viewing platform over there from which to best view trains. Back here, behind the viewing platform, you can actually see the exact intersection point of the two railroads right there. They even have a little hobo fire pit in between the two train tracks. You could sit down there, have a fire, eat some beans, and watch the trains go by. Oh, here it comes. Look at that. See all the train enthusiasts enjoying the train going by. Hello there. Inside the viewing platform here we have some hobo symbols. Hobos would leave these symbols for other hobos to read so they know what was going on. They'd leave this symbol here that this is a well-guarded home, not something you want to mess with. It's a symbol for a barking dog. You wouldn't go there because the dog would start barking and alert people to your presence. It's a good road to follow here. Dangerous drinking water. Yeah, don't drink the water here. You might get sick. And then over here, this cat. Cat is a symbol for a kind lady lives here. So I guess the cat is the universal symbol for a nice lady. Oh, here it comes. Oh, it looks like this one's this one's coming a little slower. This one's not coming in as hot as the last one. Yeah, this one's a little pokey. I like it better when the trains go fast. Listen up here. You can hear the train uh, conductors talking to each other. In my channel's one, two, three trains, I just try to record as much as I can on a daily basis. But I mostly call like Iowa Interstate, BNSF, Union Pacific. Yeah. Mostly of that action around here. Okay. And I'm mostly here on some days that I could actually be here. And the only thing I don't, the only thing I really have is my phone, but I have also a camera. Okay. So you just uh, take videos of the trains that come by here? Yeah, and also photography as well. And you take photos of the trains as well? Yeah. Awesome. So what is it we're looking at here? This is the CSX's Law of Enforcement Unit. Law Enforcement my, Unit? This is my first ever CSX Heritage Unit. Oh, cool. Right here. Awesome. I've been waiting for this thing for a while now. So apparently there's 
two trains waiting for a signal yeah, to proceed. So technically they're both blocking in everyone here at the uh, rail park. Okay, this train is starting to move. I think we'll be uh, able to leave here momentarily. And here, in the sleepy little town of Franklin Grove, we have the national headquarters of the Lincoln Highway. Unfortunately, it does look like we showed up a little bit late today. It does look like they have a little gift shop in there. They sell uh, Lincoln Highway t-shirts and other memorabilia. And we do have another Lincoln Highway marker out here in front. Now, according to that sign, we have come 999 miles from New York, <laughs> but it looks like we have 2,390 miles to go to San Francisco, which is kind of freaking me out because that's like the length of the entire Route 66. Oh, look at this. Another train. Oh, I saw that train back at the train park. Driving through Dixon, Illinois. So we enter through the Dixon Arch there. And now we say goodbye to another state. So we say goodbye to the state of Illinois and hello to the great state of Iowa. It's storming pretty bad out here in Iowa. All right, we have landed here for the night in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And uh, we're gonna continue going through Iowa towards Omaha, Nebraska tomorrow. Now the, the Lincoln Highway, as it goes through Iowa, goes through a very rural portion of Iowa. So there is really not a lot of attractions um, on the Lincoln Highway as you go through Iowa. But uh, I'll continue documenting this trip as we work uh, towards Omaha and then from San Francisco after that. But thank you guys so much for watching these videos. Um, this is quite an adventure. Uh, today, I, I don't know, I stumbled on a few things today that I just wasn't expecting. Um, the uh, Scott's Vintage Antiques was was absolutely spectacular, had just some amazing stuff, and there were some really nice guys in there. They actually, uh, they actually let me have some fried chicken that they were eating, <laughs> so some nice dudes. And uh, then the um, old school pizza was also a big shocker. I, I was not expecting that to be as amazing as it is. So I just That's one of the fun things about traveling is stumbling on new things that just blow you away and surprise you. So thank you so much. Um, I'll be continuing to upload videos every morning as long as I'm on the Lincoln Highway. If you'd like to support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more, we'll get you a postcard once a month. Where's the enamel pin? We're selling enamel pins. Show the pin. I'm selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop that is upside down. We have the possum bagger pin there, as well as four other designs, and all that helps keep this train on the track, this boat on the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.